Well, you know what? We've heard Ned Yost and Dayton Moore talk about how this team is going to surprise people this year. And I know you haven't been out there very long, Lance, but do you see anything that would indicate to you that that could be a case with this team? Well, first couple impressions here at camp, and I understand now what they're talking about with all these young kids. First chance for me to check out a lot of these guys, and they are some very impressive players here, particularly with these young pitchers. Some of the best arms that I've seen in a Royals camp probably since I've been here covering this team. Very impressive, but they're also very raw. These guys aren't going to be on the big league team here to start this year. There's not going to be any of these young prospects in the starting rotation. A couple of them might make it in the bullpen, but then position player-wise, Mike Moustakis is the closest guy to the major league leagues. He still won't be here for a couple months if you ask Dayton more. So all the young hot shots are still at least a couple months, if not a couple years away. So Jack, you're really looking at, for the most part, the same nucleus that we ended last year with. So it's really hard to imagine how they're going to be so much drastically better when they're really kind of the same nucleus. Well, you got to compete in your own division if you're going to win anything. And, and you look at this central division right now. The White Sox have a payroll of $126 million. Their starting five pitchers have a payroll of $50 million. They're paying five guys $50 million. The Royals' entire 25-man roster is $35 million. How do you expect to compete with that, Lance? Exactly, and especially when you not only have the lowest payroll in baseball, Jack, but you also have the youngest spring training roster in baseball, and they told me they are expecting probably to start the year with the youngest 25-man roster in baseball because Jason Kendall won't be on the 40-man. He'll be on the disabled list probably to start this year. So when you combine the youngest team with the cheapest team, that's not usually a recipe for anything good, Jack. Only four guys on this roster, 30 years or older. You can look at that both ways. You can say, well, they're going to be young. they got a lot of good guys coming up, but then you really wonder about that. All right, the starting pitching, and, and here you don't have a guy in the rotation that had an ERA. I don't mean to be all negative about this. I'm just laying it out there. There's not a guy in this rotation that had an ERA of under four. Hochaber is going to be the ace of the pitching staff. What is this? Anyhow. Yeah, that's a little bit scary, and for me, that's the scariest part of this team. Last year, you went into it with Gilmesh and Zach Granke as two guys that you really thought were going to be competitive and, and give you a chance to win every game. But it, really, with this group, it's really hard to see that. Luke Hochaver is kind of a guy who's been around four and a half ERA throughout most of his career. Meanwhile, you have a guy like Kyle Davies, who's been over five. You got Bruce Chen, who has been pretty good, but really, he's just kind of a journeyman pitcher. So, yes, the rotation standpoint is a little scary. Again, there are starting pitchers here that I'm seeing in camp, but they're a year or two away, and that's what's going to make the difference is when you get guys like John Lamb and Chris Dwyer and these Danny Duffies and maybe even an Aaron Crow and, of course, Mike Montgomery. When those guys get up here, that's when you can expect this team to compete if they're as good as we hear they are. But until then, I just don't see it with the pitching that they have on this team and, of course, the lack of offensive pop. Well, they, that's right, because Unieski Betancourt tied for the home run lead on the team last year as a shortstop. He's no longer around. I want to ask you about some of these position players. A guy like Chris Getz, does he have any competition at all? Is that healthy? It looks to me like he's the second baseman because Avilas is going to be over at third, right? You know, that's what we've been hearing all offseason. I found it very interesting today. They went on the practice field for about a half hour today, took some ground balls, and Mike Avilas was at second here today. Now, part of it might have been because they were turning double plays, and it might be a bodies thing, but I thought that was very interesting because we've been hearing Avilas will be at third no matter what, but today it was Wilson Betamy, Pedro Feliz, and Mike Moustakis over at third. Meanwhile, Avilas was at second. So I think they're still keeping some flexibility there with Avilas to possibly play second if Chris Getz cannot hit. And that's the big question with gets. They love his defense, and that's why they want him to play at second base. They've been raving about him, Jack. I'm telling you what, Ned Yost, that's the one guy he said he's finally been healthy this offseason. Last couple of years, Getz was battling some offseason injuries, and they said that prevented him from getting ready for the year. Well, this year they're saying he's healthy. Ned Yost says he's been one of the most impressive hitters in camp thus far. We'll see. He's going to get a chance, I think, to start this year as a second baseman, but I think they'll be quick to pull the trigger and put Avilas maybe back at second and throw a guy like Betamid at third if Getz can't hit. Well, I love this time of the year. They say hope springs eternal, so I guess that's, that's what we have to look for. I hope you have some better weather out there tomorrow, huh? <laughs> Me too. I'm cold. All right, buddy. Good night. We'll see you in Arizona.